Hello and welcome to another video by Haste Computer Repair. And today we're taking a look at the Lenovo ThinkPad T460 for use in 2024 and onward. This particular version of the T460 shipped with a Intel Core i5-6300U 2-core 4-thread CPU, which supports Intel HD Graphics 520. There's 16 gigabytes of DDR3 1600 megahertz RAM, 2 times 8 gigabyte. There's a 14 inch 1366 by 768 HD display panel. And there's a 256 gigabyte SanDisk solid state drive. And there's an M.2 Intel tri-band wireless AC 18260 Wi-Fi card with Bluetooth 4.1. The standard 720p webcam. The built-in speakers are actually not that bad. Of course, connecting a Bluetooth speaker or using higher quality headphones will be a much better experience. The standard six row keyboard that is typical to this generation of ThinkPads, a Mylar Surface multi-touch touchpad with the three buttons on top, which I always appreciate, and the red track point, where the three buttons become particularly useful. I'm going to guess that this was the cheaper option because there's no fingerprint reader and no backlit keyboard, and also no 1080p display. On the right side of the laptop, we have a microphone and headphone combo jack, SIM card tray, 4-in-1 SD card reader, USB 3.0, RJ45 Ethernet port, HDMI port, and a Kensington lock. On the left side, there's the slot for the optional smart card reader that is not present on this particular laptop, a USB 3.0 always on mini display port, air exhaust for the CPU fan, another USB 3.0, and input for the power adapter. Onto the bottom of the laptop, here's the 6 cell lithium ion battery, a connection for a docking station. Here's the air intake grill for the CPU fan, and some more grills for passive cooling. A couple holes for liquid to go through in case you do spill onto the keyboard. And I believe right here and right here are grills for the speakers. Now it's time to take a look inside the laptop. First we'll remove the battery. And using a Phillips head screwdriver we can begin loosening all the screws on the back panel. And using something like a plastic guitar pick so we don't scratch the surface of the laptop, we can begin scoring between the palm rest and the bottom panel to release the little plastic clips. Over here we have the spot for the 2.5 inch solid state drive or hard drive, which you can easily replace just by removing a screw right here and gently pulling out this way from the SATA connection to the motherboard. Over here is the spot for the optional internal battery. This one just has this plastic placeholder, but you can still install an internal battery and the connection is right here. Up here we have two DIMM slots for two RAM sticks. As I stated earlier, we have two times 8GB SK Hynix DDR3 1600MHz RAM. You can install up to 32GB, but I've found 16GB RAM sticks to be rather expensive and hard to find. Just below the DIMM slots is the CPU heatsink and heat pipe leading up to the CPU fan, which exhausts hot air this way. It's fairly easy to service. You just need to remove these four screws here and you can clean up and replace the thermal paste. Over here is the slot for the optional WWAN card. Unfortunately, this model does not support a M.2 SATA 3 SSD like various models before and after. So you will not be able to have two SSDs at once. Just above is the port for the M.2 Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card. Beyond the basics, I won't go too in depth covering everything on this motherboard. However, if you do need to do some maintenance, this is where majority of the connections reside. For example, if you want to replace the speakers, it's fairly easy to do so by removing a couple screws and the connection to the motherboard right here. Other connections such as the power button, display panel, and CPU fan are all accessible at this point. If you do want to remove the touchpad, it's underneath the battery or the plastic. You just need to remove a couple screws and you'll have access to the bottom of the touchpad. I do have another video posted showing how to do this, so go check that out if you need to. So because this laptop has the older Intel HD 520 graphics, 
you will not be able to run the current version of DaVinci Resolve. So I downloaded DaVinci Resolve 15 and tried it out. I found it to be quite responsive. I moved some clips around and did some of the usual work that I do in the software. And what I ended up with was the same 11 minutes of 1080p footage that I've been using to benchmark different ThinkPads. So I have it all lined up here. Let's see how long it takes to render. And the results, it took 48 minutes and 40 seconds to render 11 minutes of 1080p footage. So editing with an older version of DaVinci Resolve is definitely very doable. Maybe not the best for productivity, but for the casual user, that's not too bad at all. So I have my Steam NVMe SSD hooked up to an available USB 3.0 port. Over here we have the HDMI cable connected to my workstation PC. And this is where I'll be recording the gameplay footage using an Elgato 4K capture card connected to the PCIe lane in my workstation PC. And now it's time for the gaming montage. So beyond light gaming and video editing, the T460 is still very good for productivity at work. You can use Office 2021 or Office 365, and you can easily jump between tasks, get to looking up and researching important images online, or going back and forth and watching high quality 1080p or 4K video on YouTube or Netflix, etc. So for all the reasons outlined in this video, I would definitely recommend a T460 for use in 2024 and onward, especially if you manage your expectations and choose software and games and work suites, etc. appropriately. There's still lots of life left in these machines, and if you're using one in 2024, leave me a comment below and tell me about what you're using it for and how it's going. As always, thanks a lot for watching, and I hope you have a great day.